I, I want to thank John for uh, reminding me what we have to look forward to, and it's an powerful incentive to keep this uh, short, and that is we have beer at five. And so, you could do it to Ignite style and just have your slides. You know, like, bam, 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 but then you probably wouldn't get anything and you wouldn't be happy. Yeah. But so, I'll, so I'll, I'll try to be informative and yet brief at the same time so we can get to beer. The other reason uh, that we want to finish up soon, of course, is that you know the Giants are about to begin their mop-up, hopefully, so we want that to uh, not be interfered with at all. Uh, my name is uh, David Bobzine. Thank you, John and Nine Seeds and everybody at uh, Las Vegas WordCamp. Um, this is actually my first WordCamp. I have been trying to get to a WordCamp for a long time, but scheduling conflicts just kept getting in the way, so when I saw it was coming to Vegas, I said, that's great, it's Nevada, and just cold called John, and the next thing I know, here I am sponsor speaker of the whole thing and so thanks for being so welcoming and great job so far this has been very good um, thank you also to uh, Podworks that was great I feel kind of on the spot because I don't think my jokes are as good as the last guys were but um, I'll try uh, to give you an informative presentation on uh, Google Analytics and, and I'll apologize right off the bat for uh, kind of the antagonistic subtitle what you're doing doesn't measure up I don't really know what you're doing um, but I'd be willing to bet that if you were like me uh, recently, um, you used Google Analytics, you used Google Analytics on your WordPress sites, and it was there, and you looked at the reports, and you're like, oh, that's cool, and that's kind of all you did with it. So hopefully what you get from this is you learn to do perhaps a little bit more with Google Analytics. So uh, just so you know what you're in for, uh, and I am totally cool if anyone wants to self-select their way out of here, if you think this is going to be too tech for you, not tech enough for you, um, you know, hopefully I'll give you the, the overview and then you can say, yeah, this isn't really for me, will not be offended. Um, we're going to talk about why the numbers matter, what you should be doing more, uh, just in terms of your planning for how you use analytics, uh, talk a little bit about um, where we've come with analytics, uh, the difference between statistics and analytics, why that matters. Then we're going to get into a little more of the, the technical aspects of, of Google Analytics and what you do with WordPress and, and GA, if you will. Um, specifically, the asynchronous tag. You should all be using it. You should know what it is. Um, and contact form uh, GA goals, how you can use goals connected to your contact forms. Uh, and then um, get into custom variables a little bit and advanced segments that go with those and wrap it up. So, Numbers matter. A little bit about my, back, my background. Um, I'm just sort of this web mongrel that's been doing everything for a long time. None of it particularly well, necessarily. I don't consider myself a developer. I don't consider myself a designer. Um, but I do all those things and build websites. Um, but I also have this other hat beyond uh, just being a web guy. Uh, I'm also a politician. And so running for political office every two years, as I do, numbers matter. Because at the end of the day, if you don't have enough votes, you don't win. So it really doesn't matter anything else. It's all about the numbers. So I'm kind of an obsessive numbers person, always tracking what's going on, you know, looking at who's early voting right now, who's not, that sort of a thing. Uh, and so that translates for me into an interest in uh, analytics. And specifically, the perspective that if you're going to do anything, if you're going to expend any effort online, any marketing effort, any emails that you do, uh, any of that stuff, ideally you set it up in such a way that you can track it so that at the end of your effort you know exactly what you got out of it so that you know next time, well that was a dud, don't do that, that was a waste of energy, or oh wow, that was really great uh, and I would like to do more of that to get those similar type results. So uh, a framework to think about what you should be getting from analytics, uh, I get from Beth Cantor, how many people are coming to your site, where are they coming from, what do you want them to do, and what are they actually doing? So not just what are they doing, but you know, think through what is it that you hope for them to do when they're on your site, and are they actually doing it? Uh, and a little bit about where we've come with analytics. I kind of like this, uh, this um, uh, comic. The web analytics tool the client already had, yeah, that didn't work so well. Uh, free counters, you all remember those. Oh, that was, that was great, look how many hits we got on our site. Yeah, so what? Uh, also, huge security risk. Um, the tool the vendor sold, hopefully, you know, I'm sure some of you probably have experiences buying uh, analytics packages that maybe were too much for you. 
implementation that took all day. Complete implementation, yeah, change of season, you lost it. And then, of course, here we are at the very end, Google Analytics. It's free, it's nice, it's comfortable, it does things. So that's where we are. And we have come a long way from when we just had the hit counter and we knew how many hits we'd had on our site to things such as looking at you know, web trends and log traffic and uh, putting together reports. And it, I, I used to be a, a .edu webmaster, long time up at the University of Nevada, and I can't tell you how many times I would go through the log files and create these elaborate spreadsheets to show our you know, president and president's council you know, just how many hits we had last month. And oh, you know, we're in the tournament. How many hits did the website get? Oh, wow, look at all these website hits. And it was, eh. I mean, it was a lot of effort for just not a lot of information that was all of that useful, frankly. Um, so and that kind of gets to the difference between statistics and analytics. I don't know if there's a real bright line between the two, but more or less, if you put them on a continuum, you know the statistics are sort of one-dimensional. They roll up data. There it is. Analytics is a little more complex. Uh, gives you the tools as the user, as the analyzer of the data, to kind of drill in, do some different um, you know, filters and parameters to help you get more meaningful perspectives on just what exactly the data is. So uh, Google Analytics users, just about everybody in the room, hopefully. Okay. Uh, if you're not on Google Analytics, um, certainly encourage you to check it out. It's very easy to get up and running with it. Uh, those of you, okay, long time Google Analytics users, like more than three years? Okay, more than two years? Okay, right okay. how many of you know whether or not you've moved to the asynchronous tag? Are you aware that that's new and you should do that? Okay, good. Um, if you have the original tag or even something more recent such as what you're seeing up here, you need to move to the asynchronous tag. Some of you are going, oh, great, bunch of random JavaScript. I don't know what that is. Um, what's important to do is to go back into your account and just update the tag, uh, the code, to the asynchronous uh, code. There's a few reasons for doing this. Uh, first of which, it's just going to be faster, uh, better data collection and accuracy. Uh, there were problems in the past with uh, tracking loads when, when JavaScript wasn't exactly working. Basically, you can think of the asynchronous tag as uh, the, 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 the Google Analytics tag is now on its own lane on the highway, and it's just going to do its thing, and you don't have to worry as much about how it might interact with other JavaScript, other, other page load uh, objects. It just kind of does its thing. So with that in place, we've established that you're all going to move to the asynchronous uh, uh, Google Analytics code. Um, Google Analytics goals, uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with this, uh, they allow you to look at um, specific things you want people on your site to do and whether or not they've actually accomplished that. So in other words, it's, it's great to know how many hits you had, how many page views, where they're coming from. That's great. But you know, ideally, you're trying to get people to do stuff, whether it's download a white paper or buy a product or more commonly, contact you uh, through your website. Um, I, I don't know about you, but 90% of the clients that I work with, it's just, hey, we need a business site up. We want to establish an intermediate relationship with a prospective client. We want them to read through it and experience us a little bit and contact us to take the next step. So they would like a way to be able to track whether or not they're being successful doing that. So they can do that with Google Analytics uh, goals. Again, multiple types. You can have it be a, a, a URL destination. In other words, the thank you page for when they fill out the, the form. Uh, or it's just that you know, they spend time on a site, or they were highly engaged with the site, and they uh, you know, viewed a number of pages uh, for their visit. Uh, with Google uh, Analytics goals, you can also establish funnels. So you can map out different paths that they might take through the site and evaluate those against each other, and also look for uh, abandonment points. Uh, particularly useful if you're doing e-commerce and you're taking someone through a shopping process and, oh, when they get to the blue cardigans, they always bail. So then you know that you've got a problem with your content there. Uh, so that's, that's useful to do. You can set up to 20 goals per account, uh, so you've got a lot of flexibility for uh, putting in place a lot of different goals. So 
Uh, like I said earlier, uh, emailing uh, you through a website, that may be something that someone wants to do when they want to establish uh, the next step in their relationship after they've checked out your site. They go to your email contact form and you want to be able to track that. So commonly uh, used um, plugin, contact form seven. How many people use that? A lot of people, hopefully. Okay, um, if you're not familiar with this, there are others. This is my favorite. I'm not someone who really has a lot of time to go looking for new WordPress plugins. So when I find something that you know clearly has a good uh, update history and seems to be pretty solid in terms of going from version to version, I go with it and, and stay with it. Um, I like it. with Context Form Seven. You know, you can do multiple forms. Once you have the plugin set up, you can have you know forms galore all over your website. Uh, it, it has a builder where you can sort of drag and drop the controls. Uh, and, and create different forms with all sorts of different um, uh, form objects. Uh, and it works really well with uh, really simple CAPTCHA. At, at one time in the plugins history, those two products were together and they split off. Um, I don't know about you, but I, I can't do a, an email contact form on a website without CAPTCHA anymore, without it almost instantly being spammed. So it's a good thing to have. Uh, and of course, if you need it, there's the URL. So. There is a way, uh, and I'm going to walk you through this way, uh, to set up your Google uh, Analytics goal with Contact Form 7. However, what I found, and I found this rather recently, is that the documentation that's up there online when you Google for it isn't exactly complete. So I took the time recently, as in the other day, I finally wrote down the steps that it takes, um, and uh, wrote up the complete step-by-step -step as to how you set up a form to track a conversion goal using Contact Form 7. So if you want that, there's the URL, uh, there's, the, there's the short link for that, um, and you can go check that out and follow it through. And by all means, if you go through it and you find that I didn't quite do it right, or if there's something not clear, please you know, leave me some feedback and I'd be, be happy to address that. L. As in L is for link, but you know you're right. Is it an I? Is it an L? I know it wasn't the best way to choose that. So I'm not going to go through that whole blog post and read it to you, but I'm going to give you the highlights of that so you, when you get in there and you start following the uh, the instructions, hopefully you know uh, where I'm going. Essentially, what you're doing is you're you're using a uh, a JavaScript. Uh, action, uh, uh, a hook, basically, that you're supplying in the additional settings for Contact Form 7. You're going to fake out Google Analytics with a, uh, a completion page that is not actually returned uh, to the user once they submit the form. Because if you're familiar with Contact 7, it's really nice. You can configure a little Ajax thank you for submitting your email uh, message that's displayed right there on the page. It doesn't actually take you to an additional web page upon completion of the form. Uh, so without that additional web page to go uh, to once you've sent the form, you would think that there's no way for Google Analytics to track the goal because, of course, you have to go page, 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 and then there's the final page for completion of the goal. So what you're doing is you're creating a fake page uh, and you're putting that into the additional settings. So what you have here is on send, okay, and again, the full code for this is up on, up on the, um, uh, the blog post about this. But here at the end, I've got this path, funnel underscore g1 slash complete.html. Again, complete.html is a completely fictitious page. It will never exist anywhere on the internet. Uh, but funnel underscore g1, I just use that nomenclature because I might have funnel underscore G2, G3, G4 for four different goals that I may be eventually providing. It's just a way for me to keep things straight. Uh, and it's also a way for when that page shows up along with all of the other real pages uh, in your Google Analytics content um, report, uh, you'll know what that was. And so once you've got that set up uh, in contact uh, form seven for your particular email uh, form that you've built using the plugin, uh, you're gonna go switch over to Google Analytics and you're gonna create the new goal. 
Uh, and again, the complete instructions up on the blog post. But essentially, the key part of this is the goal URL has to match what you put in there. So again, funnel underscore g1 slash complete.html. What's happening is with JavaScript, it's, it's, it's pushing uh, that, uh, that hook to Google Analytics. And Google Analytics is going to then register, oh, aha, we just had a page view at this fictitious page, funnel underscore g1 slash complete.html. I'll recognize that as a, as a page view. And that will constitute the completed goal. So that's how it counts the goal conversions which is pretty handy. Now, set that up. Send yourself a goal or two. Uh, make sure, or not a goal, a message or two using the form uh, to attempt to register the goal. Check it the next day to make sure that it actually completed. Now, here's a little bit of a gotcha, and this one tripped me up a few times. I have noticed a little bit of a, you know, each new WordPress release comes out, then the developer doing the plugin has to catch up. I've seen a little bit of stagger back and forth um, with uh, the Ajax messages not always firing on contact form seven. I was like, well, wait a second. Last week, this was working. After I submit the form, I get the thank you for contacting us message. But now I submit the form. The message doesn't appear, but I know the form worked because I got the email. So what's going on here? Well, sure enough, um, did a little sleuthing and figured out that there were some JavaScript conflicts that were happening. And uh, sure, the form was working, the emails were coming in, but the conversions weren't registering. So you kind of have to make sure that it's registering. If it's not registering and you go into debug mode, start looking at uh, potential JavaScript conflicts that are happening on the site. And um, you know, I got to say, I love plugins. Plugins make my life so much easier. I mean, it does that for everybody. But there's something to be said for making sure you only have the plugins activated that you really need. Because the more plugins you have in play, the greater the opportunity is for conflicts happening. Uh, and that was the case in this one um, debug situation that I had there. So that's just a little um, cautionary tale for you. OK, so now we're going to talk about custom variables. Uh, this is pretty cool. Um, I mean, God love Google for coming up with all this cool stuff all the time. And you know, these have been out for about a year or so now, maybe a little bit longer. Uh, and, and what they are uh, are uh, you know, name value pair tags uh, that go into your code. And you can make this stuff up. It's just additional things that you're passing to Google Analytics for Google Analytics to track. Um, with those variables, you can you know, just look at them as the variables in the reports, or you can use them to create uh, advanced segments, other ways to slice and dice your information and your data. So back to this whole idea that analytics is a little more complex because you can set up and configure how you want to view uh, your data. So uh, here's where we would have a nice little branch if we had more time. And we'd say, OK, now for the developers in the room, we're going to take a look at how this comes together with PHP and JavaScript and everything else. Um, and if you are interested in that, there's a guy uh, back east, uh, Rusty Tanton, um, who has a great previous uh, WordCamp Atlanta presentation about a year or so ago uh, that goes through all the different code examples of using PHP uh, to figure out which uh, JavaScript to parse out uh, to present these dis different custom variables depending on where you are in a WordPress site. So things such as who the author is, what the tags on a post are, what the category is. I mean, there's all these sorts of things that you can do with custom variables. So if you really want to get your hands dirty, um, that first uh, short URL would be the one to check out. And that'll take you right to his presentation, all of his code samples, and everything else. Um, for me, there's a great plugin that does a lot of this for you. And it's a, it's a Yoast uh, plugin that guy back in Holland whose name isn't actually Yoast, but you know, he does some cool stuff. And that's the Google Analytics for WordPress uh, plugin. So we're going to spend some time uh, taking a look at that and how you can put that to use on your site. So Google Analytics for WordPress, uh, three cool features. There's, there's more features to it. But for me, this is what really sets it apart. Uh, you can do tracking of outbound links and downloads. That's kind of fun. Good to know. Uh, custom variables. Uh, here are some of the ones that you can use. Author, 
you've got a multi-author blog, this is great. You can set up some wonderful competitions between your authors, like, oh, you know, Jack gets more page views than Jill. Um, single category and or multiple categories. Um, I'll show you a little bit more about this in, in, as we go on. Um, I think it works better for single categories. In other words, if you have a mutually exclusive approach to how you do categories, one post can only ever be in one category and you don't have overlap. I think it's a little more meaningful. Um, the multiple categories where you have a post that's you know, three or four different categories, that tends, tends to start getting a little bit messy. Um, post type, you know, we've been he hearing all day long about all the cool things that you can do with post types and you can track that uh, using this as well. Um, logged in users, publication year, tags. Um, one of the cool things you can do is you can track if the person viewing a page is logged in and what their role is. Administrator, editor. Um, you can go further and actually track the name um, not with this plugin, but you know that's a little bit sketchy because I don't think Google wants to do that. Um, but with the logged in users, if you enable that one as one of your uh, custom variables in this plugin, what it allows you to do is exclude all the administrators from recording. Kind of nice. I do that on my site. I mean, like, well, yeah, you know, if I were to go in and find out that you know half of the page traffic is because I'm anal retentive and constantly checking the site, that doesn't really do me much good. I'd like to take myself out of that mix. Um, so that's possible with, with this plugin. So just a sample shot of the uh, configuration screen for um, the plugin. You can configure up to five variables. So you do have to, of the ones that are available to you, you have to make some choices as to which ones uh, you want to use. So after you have that in place, you release it into the wild, wait a little bit, generate some traffic, and then go into Google Analytics to look for uh, the variables themselves. And I'll give you just a quick overview of, of what some of that looks like. Now, I'm just going to briefly put up my campaign website. None of you can vote for me because I'm in Reno, so I'm not trying to politic. I'm just, this is, this ends up doing double duty. It's my sandbox site because if I mess it up, it's just me. It's not a client that gets mad, so I end up doing a lot of uh, tracking with this. But if you were to look at um, the resulting Google Analytics code that gets put into the head of the document, you know, what you'll see uh, right here should look pretty familiar, except of course it's you know wrapped with a JavaScript comment that you know this is being produced by uh, by the, the the plugin. So far so good. Um, you do see one custom variable. Ha ha! Custom variable logged in administrator. That's because I'm logged into my site, so this is being flagged. So this page view is not being tracked right now because of how I have this set up. But then if you were to go into say a blog post, this gets a little more interesting. It's that time of year where campaigns are getting nasty, so this is a, this is a nasty rebuttal of mine to my mean challenger. Um, the, uh, the custom variables start to become a little more sophisticated. So we've got um, GAQ.push, custom variables. We got the administrator again. We got another custom variable, author, David, custom variable, tag, campaign, education, uh, on and on. Custom variable four, the year of the, uh, of the blog post, custom variable five, categories. So all this stuff is being pushed and it's being determined for you on the fly, of course, by WordPress and the, um, uh, and the plugin. Uh, so all this is being sent to, to Google Analytics uh, for tracking of data. And just to show you uh, the configuration screen itself, what this looks like, you know, you have these different, um, you know, once you have it set up, you have these different ways to, to, set it, to set it up for your site itself. It's pretty simple. What you do is you just enter in your, um, your analytics code. Uh, you can determine where exactly you want the, the tracking code to be placed. Um, track outbound clicks and downloads, yes, please. Uh, and those show up as events. They don't show up as page views, although you can override it and set it up to, as page views. So you have a whole different section in your, your Google Analytics report uh, to look for those. And then, of course, the good stuff. These are the custom variables 
uh, that I showed you before. Uh, and you know, you can do the um, ignore user settings, all that good stuff here. And then when you get over to the reports, dun -da -da, what you can do is look at the actual custom variables that are being registered. So you go under visitors, top left, down over here, last one, custom variables. And you have things such as author, categories, years, etc. So if I were to click on categories, you'll have an illustration of the point that I was trying to make earlier about the starting to get a little messy when you're using multiple categories. I can see how many hits campaign trail got, but I can also see how many hits campaign trail and education got. So that starts to become a little messy in terms of its, its usefulness. But just to get, show you a, a quick um, example of what this is going to look like. OK, so that's great. Got custom variables. Those are being tracked. Um, good to know. Um, the next level, though, is employing those with advanced segments. Uh, the advanced segments give you a way to just cut uh, your data according to not just the custom variables that you've put in, but other variables that are already uh, in place. Uh, you can um, you know, look at this across time uh, uh, at all of the data. So you know, your, your, your traffic reports, your bounce rates, you know, all the stuff that's typically available to you in, in, in Google Analytics, you can uh, segment by these custom, uh, I'm sorry, by these advanced segments. And so what that looks like is you can literally, uh, in your dashboard view, straight off, up in the top right, you have these segments. Once you've created them, they're available to you. You can turn them on or off, uh, and you'll be given an overlay of uh, these different data points, uh, even right there uh, in the graph. And so to show you that, So I pull open uh, that tool, and for the custom segments, I've got, I've got, or for the custom variables, I have two advanced segments set up: author David, author Taylor. Uh, Taylor's a guy that works for me, campaign manager, so he does some blogging. I do some blogging, so I'm able to set up. Okay, I want to look at you know my performance, and I want to look at his performance, uh, and then also I think what's interesting in this case, let's do city of Reno, city of Las Vegas and take a look at my traffic that way. And right off the bat, my, my blue line, that's, that's everything. Uh, my orange line, that's the city of Reno. So lots of traffic from Reno, that's good. Those are the people that can vote for me. Um, everybody down here in Las Vegas, that's probably all the lobbyists keeping track of me. I want to know what I do. Um, so, you know, again, you can, and, and then you, once you have these segments enabled uh, for looking at your data, you can just click through Google Analytics as you normally would, and you can compare, uh, you know, how are things going as far as goal conversion. I mean, you can, you can put all these together. So, to wrap this up, um, just the takeaways on this, I think it's important uh, that you, you plan your strategy for how you're going to use Google Analytics, not just what's the plugin and, and how do I configure it and everything else, but I would encourage you to think about when you're doing blogging or social media or whatever marketing efforts that you have, try to come up with some way of thinking uh, that involves your site as sort of the hub of all your activity, that you're driving traffic to that site and then you want that site to do something. You want them to do something on that site. So even if it's just you know, a print ad in a magazine side by side with an outdoor board side by side with an email marketing campaign next to a blog post, you know, hopefully those are all driving some sort of an action. Uh, and it may be uh, that you're sending them to a contact form and you want them to contact your office or your client's office to schedule an appointment. Um, you're able to set this up uh, perhaps with four different funnels to the same goal points, okay? Uh, maybe the print ad sends 
the clients to one landing page, the outdoor board sends a client to another landing page, uh, on and on and on, same exact landing page, but different enough so that you can track it individually. Uh, you got some powerful tools there all of a sudden to understand what the return is on each one of those channel investments for your marketing. Uh, this is great stuff for your bosses if you're you know, in a corporate setting. It's great stuff for your clients. Uh, it really is um, a valuable way to make sure you're, you're focusing your efforts where they need to be focused. Um, I think it's important, back to the, the category issue, it's important to have really good information architecture behind what it is you're doing. I mean, what is your category structure? What's the taxonomy? Uh, how does your site come together? Uh, the, the cleaner that is, the cleaner the thinking is, I think the easier it is to understand the analytics data that you're, you're looking at. Uh, and I think it's also important, likewise, to, to experiment and be willing to you know, try uh, some new things with this. And then, um, you know, ultimately, it doesn't do you any good if you're the only one that geeks out on the data. Oh, wow, look at this great traffic spike that we had after we, you know, were mentioned in this newspaper article. You know, this is your opportunity to shine with the people that you serve. If you can put this data together in a meaningful way, uh, don't be shy. Get it out to your clients. Get it out to your bosses. Uh, they will love you for it. So with that, I'll stand for questions and see if anybody has any burning issues or ideas uh, or how motivated people are to get a pint. <laughs> yes? At the beginning, you mentioned the asynchronous tag. Because I have analytics installed already, so is that do I need to like uninstall, reinstall? Do I need to, what do I need to do? Exactly? What you're essentially doing is you're um, checking up on the tracking code um, so when you go to, let me just actually show this to you. So let's say we're going to start, start at the top. You're going to go to say, you know, your, your account. And what you have here is, of course, you know, you have view report. But then you can also edit. And what you want to do is you look for this little flag up here, receiving data. Everything looks good. OK, we're happy. But you know what? Let's check the status. And when we check the status, we can see what type of code we have. And so over here on the right, um, this is, you know, you should have it set up for a single domain, you know, unless you're tracking multiple domains. Um, but just check and make sure that you have the, this most recent format of the code that has this um, GA, underscore GAQ dot push, and that's, that's the asynchronous. And so if you set it up, I, I should know the actual date. I apologize, I don't. But if, if you set it up a year and a half ago or earlier, you probably want to go in and just check to make sure that you have the most recent version of it. And so, I mean, you're, you're still collecting data under the old code. It's not a problem. Your data collection should be better using asynchronous. And then most importantly, if you're going to be looking to do the contact form 7 uh, goal setup following my instructions, you absolutely want to have the asynchronous. So where um, do I get the updated code? Right there. No, I know, but um, is that automatically going to be on there if I don't, if I have an older Google is just providing that to you the minute you go in there. And so you, if, if you see this, and this doesn't, and, this, and I'm sorry, I didn't give you the complete um, uh, instructions for this. If what is on your site doesn't match this, copy this and paste it in your site. That's. I didn't use the site. I just used that, yeah, that QA number. I didn't, I mean, I didn't OK, if, you're, if, your theme, if your theme is new enough, you should be OK. Um, I wouldn't know. Check, check the source. Just view the source real quick. And if what you see in the source looks similar to this, you should be OK. I guess we, and, and, I'm, and I'm happy if, if, you, if, you, if you, you know what, if you want to shoot me an email, um, I, can, I can take a quick look at it and say you're good or oh, you got to update it. It's, it's really simple to see. If you just view the source of the page, you can look at the code real quick to see if it's there or not. OK, good. Yes? Yeah. 
you can configure. You can, you can actually configure. It does get put in the header, but you can configure it if you want it someplace else. Uh, you know, theoretically, if, if you, I mean, I guess one scenario would be if you're having conflicts with another JavaScript snippet, you may want to put it elsewhere. I mean, I've seen that happen before with like a third party, you know, click tracking analytics software that for some reason wouldn't work unless it was placed uh, preceding the Google Analytics code. You might have to move that around a little bit. Um, the plugin gives you that option to just say, okay, fine. You go do it. I'll give it to you, and I'll turn it off. So it it is flexible enough to do that, which is which is good. Anyone else? Anyone? Else? Cool. Beer time, but not really, because I guess we're supposed to come back here at five and do wrap up and closing and everything else. So. Okay. Thank you very much.